Hey everyone, welcome back to Bike Geek. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure a 3560 Cisco PoE switch. Whether you're setting up IP phones, cameras, or wireless access points, this guide will help you enable PoE functionality and configure the essential settings on your Cisco switch. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully configured PoE switch ready to power your devices. Let's get started. The first step is to access your Cisco switch. You must have console cable for configuration. Connect your laptop or computer to the switch using a console cable. After connecting the console with your switch, check your COM port serial number. Right click on this PC, go to manage, then click device manager. There you will find your connected hardware input and output devices. Find Ports COM and LPT option. Here you will see your serial COM number. Mine is serial COM 3, yours may be COM 1 or 2. After finding your serial number, now open PuTTY application so we can connect with Cisco switch. It will take one or two minutes to fully start your Cisco switch. After you see initial configuration, type no and press enter. Type enable and press enter. No password is required at this stage. This command will take you to exec mode, also referred to as privileged exec mode. Next, enter global configuration mode by typing configure terminal and pressing enter. Assign a host name to the switch to ensure it operates within a specific network environment. To do this, use the host name command followed by the desired name for your switch. Set an administrative password to secure the switch using the following command. Type enable password followed by your desired password. Configure the virtual teletype VTY lines, which are the logical interfaces for remote management of the device via protocols like Telnet or SSH. Here's how you might use the command. Line VTY 015 accesses the configuration mode for all VTY lines. Password sets a password for remote login. Login requires users to enter the password before gaining access, then exit from line VTY. To secure your Cisco device's console access, type line console zero command. To secure console access with a password, password sets a password for console login, then exit. Let's configure VLAN. To configure VLAN 1 on a Cisco switch, type interface VLAN 1 to access the VLAN 1 interface. Assign an IP address using IP address command then type IP address of your network and subnet mask. Then set a default gateway, type IP default gateway and press enter. This command allows your device to route traffic to other networks via the specified gateway, essential for managing devices remotely across different subnets. Then select again your VLAN interface and bring the interface up with no shutdown. This allows VLAN 1 to communicate within your network. Exit from interface. Again, exit from configuration terminal. To check the status of all interfaces on a Cisco switch, use the command show interface status. This provides key information like interface IDs, status connected or not, VLAN assignments and speed. It's a quick way to troubleshoot connectivity issues or verify interface configurations. Now we will configure LAN interface. To configure multiple interfaces simultaneously, use the interface range command. For example, type interface range, then your port type, whatever it is, gigabyte or megabyte, to select interfaces 1 through 10. Then, apply configurations to all selected interfaces at once. Then, type no shutdown command and press enter. This command enables the interface, changing its status from administratively down to up, allowing it to start passing traffic. Then, type switch port mode trunk and press enter. This command sets the port to trunk mode, allowing it to carry traffic for multiple VLANs, essential for inter-VLAN communication between switches. 
I got error on this command, but don't worry, in later switches you will not get this type of error. If you get this error, then type switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q and press enter. This ensures the port uses the industry standard 802.1Q protocol for VLAN tagging. To allow all VLANs on a trunk port, then type switch port trunk allowed VLAN all and press enter. This command ensures that the trunk port can carry traffic for all VLANs configured on the switch, then exit from interface and also exit from configuration. To save your running configuration, simply type WR command. It's a shorthand for write memory, making it quick and convenient for saving configurations. Again to configuration terminal and configure LAN interface for PoE, we have PoE switch, so from 1 to 10 ports are without PoE. And we will configure 11 to 20 ports with PoE configuration. So when we connect any device on these ports, it will get power over Ethernet. To assign a port to a specific VLAN on a Cisco switch, type switch port mode access to set the port to access mode, followed by switch port access VLAN ID. Replace 205 with your VLAN ID. Then, type switch port mode, access, and press enter. This command ensures the port is set to access mode, allowing it to belong to a single VLAN and connect directly to end devices like PCs or printers. Then exit from interface. Now let's create interface LAN port's name, go to interface, and type description command, the name of your interface port. This command helps document the purpose of the interface, making network management and troubleshooting easier. We will do same for our PoE port interfaces. Provide name for all the ports from 11 to 20. After assigning the name for PoE ports, then enable automatic power. On a Cisco switch port, type power inline auto and press enter. This command allows the port to automatically detect and provide power to connected PoE devices, like IP phones or wireless access points. To quickly view the current status of all interfaces on a Cisco switch, use the Show Interface Status command. This command provides a detailed overview, including interface IDs, VLAN assignments, speeds, and operational states. Once we've configured our Cisco switch, it's time to connect our Unify access point and IP phones using the power over Ethernet ports. PoE simplifies the setup by delivering both power and data through a single Ethernet cable. First, plug your Unify access point into a PoE-enabled port on the switch. The switch will automatically detect and supply power using the power in line auto configuration. Next, connect your IP phones to other PoE ports, ensuring they receive both power and network connectivity. And that's it. You've successfully configured your Cisco PoE switch to power your devices and set up VLANs for efficient communication. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more tech tutorials. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching Bike Geek and I'll see you in the next video.